but I sing under Sarah Shore. I mean, it doesn't matter. No, no, <laughs> I it's, it's, both. Yeah, you're both. But make sure it's great. Hello, everybody. Welcome to Extra Connections. I'm James Lott Jr. I am the JLJ of JLJ Media, which is my company here on the YouTube channels. And of course, if you're listening to us, hello, podcast listeners, we're on every streaming search you can think of in the universe. Well, maybe not the universe, but we're on Apple, we're on Google, we're on Spotify, iHeartRadio, all those places you love to be listen to your podcast. So if you're listening to this, I appreciate that. Share it with other people. Um, my guest, I'm so excited because this person's having having a good a good month, you know, a good week, <laughs> a good month, a uh, good year. Uh, we like that. Um, let me tell you, let me tell you what she does. She is an actress. She is a singer. She is a writer. She's also a songwriter. There's, two, there's a difference. She's a writer and a songwriter. She's also a producer and a film. It's a little film that's just, I don't know, just, it's just, it, it won a Golden Globe for Best Original Screenplay. And now it's like nominated for like five or six Oscars, including Best Picture, including that. And one of the songs is nominated too. Uh, it also got American Cinema Editor Awards uh, nominations also. I saw that too. Yeah. The trial of the Chicago 7 is one thing. So we're going to talk to her. I know she did some modeling too. She's all kinds of stuff. We're going to talk to her about this movie, of course, what's going on, and know a little bit about her because it's all about extra connections. We're going to connect with Sarah Schroeder-Metzgen. How are you, Sarah? I'm doing fabulous. Thank you. Thank you for having me. It's my <laughs> pleasure. My pleasure. Um, so first of all, I'd like to ask everybody just because, you know, we've been in a strange year, and but thanks to the opening up again, how are you doing? I'm doing great. I'm healthy. Family's healthy. Um, I like to say stay in the light, you know, and you just, you just go forward. So this year was tough on everybody, but you know what? You just have to go forward and have a positive attitude. That's the way I think about it. And uh, I just knock on wood that things have been pretty good. Um, I agree. I totally agree. Um, okay. I mean, we're going to start off with the big thing first and then go backwards. So this film, The Trial of Chicago 7, you are a producer on it. Um, Aaron Sorkin. Hello, a name everybody knows. Amazing. <laughs> I mean, big names. Sasha Barry Cohen is in it, who's nominated for an Oscar, Best Supporting Actor. All right. So, okay. As a producer, um, how do you discern projects? Like, like what one do you go, okay, I'll wait part of that. Like how, do you have any criteria or how, you know, how's that happen for you? Well, it's interesting you ask that because we get a lot of scripts and we're yeah. partners with Cross Creek Media. Um, Cross Creek Pictures used to be, now it's Cross Creek Media. And um, it's, it's interesting because they sent us this script. We did four movies this year. So even during COVID released, I mean, we, we um, we shot them the year before, but anyway, release those. And when we got the trial of Chicago seven, and I was actually my husband, Steve Matzkin, who was like, oh, we have to do this one. And I was, my gosh, Steve, we've already got three. And are we going to do another one? And of course, when it was Aaron Sorkin and, you know, Tyler Thompson, who was the main producer and Mark Platt. I mean, when you have that kind of talent, you got Sasha Baron Cohen. I mean, you've got the cast, Frank Langella. Yeah. His, he was amazing. You don't say no. no. So my husband was like, we should do it. And I'm like, after like one conversation, he was like, convinced me. <laughs> I know, and his no, name's Steve Maskin. Yeah, no, no. that's, uh, yeah. hey, Steve. No, yeah, no, completely. I totally understand that. I completely understand. I mean, it's, 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 and the film was wonderful. And, and I saw it. So it's one of the things I, I, I happen to see. It. it was really, it was really good. But it's incredible. Night, and the script, when I read the script, I was like, Hello, true story, right. very timely. Yes. I mean, it was just yes. it was amazing. Very timely. It was 1968, um, the year I was born, actually. So, no, um, close to that. But it's it's very interesting. Um, the things that happen in the past sometimes happen again and happen in similar ways and mm -hmm. may have a different face to them or different players. Um, yes, history but you can repeats learn itself. <laughs> Exactly. Mm -hmm, exactly. Um, so it must be. So it must have been. Okay. So tell me about how doing film. You don't just wake up and do a film. It's like I mean, there's a lot that goes into pre-production um, and making the deals happen and all that. And um, how long did it take for this from like you know getting the scripts and going okay to your actual airing? Well, I know Aaron had the script and pitched it around for a long time. So on this one, we were not in it at the very beginning. It was more Tyler and and Aaron, and then he brought in DreamWorks and Steven and Tyler worked a deal. 
So we came in a little later. We were actually partners with Cross Creek in their general partnership fund. So we get to pick and choose which ones we want to be involved with, which is lovely. And they're, they're amazing family. They're just amazing people. So we're, we got involved with them about six years ago. Okay. And so we've been doing different projects with them. So in this particular one, we didn't get involved until a little later on where it was dreams works was coming on and we were ready to go. The thing that's interesting about this and the part that we played in, we had a big part in is when we were going to decide if we're going into theaters during COVID. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. So that's when Tyler and everybody got together, Timmy and Steve, my husband, and we, yeah, everybody just talked about it. Do you want to go into theaters? And we kind of looked at Tenet and we kind of, they led the way and then they kind of went into theaters and we said, you know what? We're not going into theaters. People are not going to go to theaters at, at this moment. And that was the best decision. We went direct to streaming Netflix. It was a great release. Yes. Yeah. And it not to get into too much of the business stuff, but then you don't have a lot of p a you know, in front of you and right. that always costs money so I think that was a really good decision and that was part of the reason with Steve and I were really happy that they didn't do that because when we went in we didn't know we we're like still maybe going into theaters and I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. yeah so it was I think Tyler and everybody on the board made a good choice I, I agree. That's why I saw it. I saw it online streaming. I mean, this, it's that was, a, that was a strange thing, too. Like, these big movie releases had to think about that. Like, where do we put it? Because and I know later on of the year, the drive-in started happening. Uh, but early on, that wasn't even happening either. Everything just kind of like, that was it. And I feel yeah. bad. I, I love the theater experience. Uh, Me, too. So. I pick. Hello. I know. Hello. I know. <laughs> yeah. I, just, I mean, just, the popcorn, you sit back. <laughs> For me, it's the raisinets. I get the raisinets. Um, but yes, I, I, I miss, no, I do. I miss, I miss, I miss the, the big screen, hearing the surround sound. I mean, I got a big TV right here. I got a nice, but that's not the same thing. No, you've got a nice setup. But when you go to the theater, and you, I don't know, you've got your ticket. I just, I'm with you. I miss it too. I miss it dearly. I'm looking forward. I'm looking forward to that. Hopefully, returning, and that it'll be it'll be kind of nice. Um, I mean, it'd be nice to have that get that big screen experience that we that we like, and to get out the house. Just just get out the house. I mean, that's that was the night you go to the movies. You go to the movies during the day at night. That's you get out the house. Where are you yeah. now? Are you in? I'm in, I'm in Inglewood. I'm in Inglewood in Los Angeles. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm in Florida. <laughs> okay. Well, so are the theaters open there yet? There are some open. There are limited capacity, but yes, pretty much Florida acts like they're just pretty much open. I mean, <laughs> <that> you still, <laughs> you just kind of don't know what the hell's going on. And then, and then the spring break came and I'm like, <laughs> right. what is going on? So my friends are all posting like on Instagram. So I was like, is it, are we back in 2019? It, look, it just looked like it was like, the. I'm like, okay, so I guess so. And I love Florida. I love Florida. I, I, I miss being down there, but I was like, I'm not ready for that just yet. I'm here in LA. We're all trying to help together. Um, but yeah, yes. I saw that in Florida. I saw that in Florida. Like, <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see that. Um, but the, okay, so where, okay, so when you won the Golden Globe for Best Original Screenplay, did you even think the Oscars were possible in terms of nominations? Well, I mean, you don't want to speculate but you do read variety and you read what people are saying and I just feel blessed I mean honestly I, I don't ever want to think oh I'm gonna get we're gonna get an Oscar or Aaron's gonna get an Oscar I mean screenplay I think you know he's he, he, he's so on a golden globe I know I think so too it's an amazing screenplay amazing script I should say yeah. and but no I don't ever think oh Oh, we're going to get an Oscar because you know what? The more you get excited about something and I just like to set my expectations and then everything's a, it's a golden goose. It's like, Oh, that happened. Yay. And I feel blessed to even get a nomination. Yeah, I know. It's, it's a lot of films out there, right? There's a lot of films they could choose from. Yeah. And I, I honestly, I had not watched Nomadland before. And, and so when I, I was like, what is this movie? I mean, so most of the other ones I had, had watched and, but you know, you don't look at awards as when you do a movie, your heart's so into it. Right. 
and you just, it's just a project and you, you realize we've left that a while ago. Right. Right. And then now it's coming along, even though we released it later in October, but no, I just look at any kind of nomination as, Hey, good job. And to the whole team, cast, crew, everybody put their heart and soul in, and especially Tyler Thompson, who put the whole deal together. And of course, Aaron Sorkin. Yes. Tyler, Aaron, all you guys. Um, yeah, that's well, just congratulations on that and, and good luck. And um, I don't know how they're going to do the Oscars this year yet. I know that I, I, I think it's good. I don't know what's happening there, but either way, it should be, it should be interesting nights. It should be very interesting yeah, nights. it will. It, I, I don't know either. I, I've kind of been hearing through the grapevine. They might open up it a little bit. I mean, the Grammys kind of showed up right. strong. Right. So yeah. let's see. Yeah. Yeah, I'm curious. I'm very, I'm very curious. So, okay, so how long, because you, okay, you, you do, you've done so much. How long have you been in the business? So I got in the business in 2006. Okay. Um, I produced my first movie called Man in the Chair with Christopher Plummer. I was actually, um, I was lucky. I put together the financing and then I had a great director who happened to be my brother. And uh, I got to play a little part um, with Christopher Plummer. And Honestly, after that day, I was hooked. Even though I will go back when I was in high school, I always wanted to kind of be in acting and singing and we'll go into the singing later, but I just really loved it. And my brother was like, do you know, Sarah, the average actor makes $2,000 a month. I'm like, he gave me this older brother I love lecture. It. I love it. I'm the youngest of eight. And yeah, so yeah. I'm listening. He was gone before I yeah. even was born. And then he comes back and he's like, you know. And so I listened to my brother who was in the business. Yeah. <laughs> no yeah. less. Yeah, that's right. I love it. <laughs> I do. I love it. Um, okay. So what is, what is one thing about Christopher Plummer that, you know, you know, we would maybe that you get to discover while you worked with him? You know, I think the sweetest thing about him is he's so generous with time. He was very kind. And he also loves his wife he made so much. Or, I mean, he's, God rest his soul, rest in peace. Yeah, you don't say rest in peace. But yeah, I, he, he yeah. you know, he still loves his wife. Of course, he's in heaven loving his wife. Yeah. And I'm just saying, he was so kind with his time. And, and he had always call his wife. And they were always in constant com com communication, constant communication. And that he never had a cell phone. So he always used the landline. No. When I knew him, he never had a cell phone. So that's the funny part. I had his home phone number. That's and I'll, it's crazy, right? At one time he was trying to track me down. He actually called my mom to get my number because he had lost my cell number. So he looked up my mother's name. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Your mother's at home. You know, don't yes. make you at home. And Christopher Plummer calls her house. Yes. Is, is your mom in Idaho still? Yes. Okay, does that never, okay, that, that's like never, I mean, that's like never happens to anybody. That is crazy. <laughs> oh, please, please. True story, true story. And how he figured out her number, but everything's listed in Idaho. It's yeah. still, it was back in, you know, they still had the little bit of a, it wasn't so much internet going on. So yeah, yeah he called her and she was like, yeah, I have her number. <laughs> that's hilarious. Oh my God, it's hilarious. I love it that. It made her day. <laughs> oh, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, anybody who knows who he is, obviously, would be like, I mean, this is kind of like, come on, he's a, he was a legend. Um, <laughs> so that, that's, that's great. That's great. Um, okay, because, because, okay, so for acting, what is it about acting that, what does it feed you with? It's a very good question. So when I act, I feel very vulnerable. And it, it brings out an instinct in me that it's almost a little uncomfortable, but then it also lets you play. It's like, oh, I have this little box I'm in, but I can go play here or I go there or I go there. And you can do so many different things and you don't have to be this person. You just go with it. And I love the different takes. If you get a couple two or three takes, you can play them different every time. Yeah. So it's just, it's being somebody else. You're not, I'm not Sarah Schroeder anymore. I'm the person that's in the script, the character. Yeah, yeah you, get, you, get to, you get to put on camouflage. Yeah. 
right? And you get to become whatever it is you're needed to become. That's the, and I, I've, I've done some acting here. I mean, not to the caliber of you, but I've done a few things here and there. And that is kind of fun to play somebody else, just to go and play someone else. It's just no apologies, <clears throat> you know, no nothing. It's just you're, you're playing what they want you to play. Yeah, and you have fun. I mean, it's fun. It is That's fun. One of my mentors, um, well, I'll let you ask, but one of my mentors is Jenna Rollins, and she she's amazing. And she once told me, she's like, just have fun and play it different every time. And I think that really stuck with me. I was a Jenna Rollins. Again, again, okay, first of all, do you, <laughs> like, do you ever pinch yourself? Because I mean, every once in a while, because I interview, I mean, I interview people all the time. And some of them are really big names. And I do pitch myself and go, okay, I just talked to so-and-so. Uh, and I have, like I said, I have their phone number. Or we, we actually became friends a little bit, you know, off you know, off camera. I'm like, you ever pinch yourself and go, I work with Christopher Plummer, Jenna Rowland is my man. Like, do you ever just, like, pinch yourself? Yes, all the time. Yeah. I feel blessed. <laughs> I'm pinching myself right now because I'm on with you. <laughs> okay, I like that. But no, because we're in this business that, you know, we know this. And people out there may know this, too. There's thousands of people who do what we do um, and don't get a chance or are struggling or trying to get where we are and are trying to get even past where we are, trying to get to even half of where we are. And I just, I always feel for them. I just, I'm always rooting for them. It's like, yeah, you can, you can do it. But, you know, I, I know how, I know how blessed I am. So I'm sure, I'm sure you feel the same way. I certainly do. Yes, for sure. And I do. There, and there's so many talented people that oh. just can't get a leg up or can't. You just need that chance. You do. You really do. And so we we both, I feel blessed too. I am ready. Your song. I thought, oh my God, you guys like, my song. Oh my God. Oh my gosh, I love that. I could listen to that every day. Oh, you, you just, I am ready. Um, that, was, that was my first song ever, Sarah, that I ever wrote and put out. And now I'm working on my seventh album right now, but that was my first song I ever did. Well, I've listened to a few of yours. Oh my God, thank Looking you. for the light. Yes. Oh my God. You oh my God. It just, it just made my day. Oh my God. And, and Tanya. <laughs> yeah, the latest one. That's for my sister. It was her birthday, so I wrote a song for her. That's pretty cool. Yeah, thank I you. loved it. I listened to it. I was like, I could get up and listen to I Am Ready every morning. <laughs> oh my God. That's what, that's what it's for. People like to motivate people. That's what it's for. Oh my 100% God. 100% awesomeness. Oh. <laughs> oh, thank you. oh my god, just, just made my day. Um, I'm totally thrown off all of a sudden. Right, thank you. Um, I do, I love it. Now, I go out, you know, the thing was taught music. I know I love music. I I chose that there's some ways I can only express myself, which is through music. Like there's certain ways you can express yourself through acting, through writing. This is the, I do through music. So you're also songwriter, singer. Uh, when did you start doing music? And I was really little. My mom was like, you're going to church quite the way you like it or not. <laughs> oh, I love it. Yes. Yeah. yeah. So I was really little. And then, um, um, like I said, I was the youngest of eight. And so we had my mom and dad had four boys and then four girls. Like they just had nothing else to do but just have kids. And <laughs> he was, <laughs> they were in Idaho. Um, so <laughs> <laughs> you know, not yeah. much to do in the winter. I come from, I come from a big family too. I know. I know how it is. So you do? Yeah, okay. I do. I do. Yeah, I so do. you get it. Um, and then my dad was a mortician. Oh. So, <laughs> yeah. Wow. And there's that. Yeah. So he used to actually take, go ahead. Sorry. Did you watch Six Feet Under? Oh, yes. Yeah. I was like, oh. yeah. Yeah. Yes. Terrible. I watched it. I watched it later, not when it was first out, but I watched it later. But yeah, Michael C. Hall and then and went to Dexter. Yeah, I liked it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Okay, so, so you're saying, because you're saying, so here, so you, you're, you're. Oh, my dad was a mortician and he would literally, we take us down to the retirement homes and us four girls were the entertainment. So uh -huh. we would sing and dance and we'd bring our little jukebox. And he was like, I'm going to drop them off for two or three hours. I don't have time for them. And it's good for the community. So we, we would go down and we would sing songs and we would entertain and they loved it. They were so happy to have people come. So yeah, that's part, that's in my EPK. We talk about that and everybody's kind of surprised by that, but that literally happened a lot. <laughs> well, what a great, what a great training ground though about performing in front of people, you know, yes. just performing in front of people. Cause I know for some, I know a lot of my friends 
that was the, they they had the talent they knew they wanted to do it but it was the performance part that was the anxiety ridden part for them um yeah. because for you y'all just uh, younger you are and you had your sisters with you so you guys if you weren't alone up there you were able to entertain and to get the yeah. experience it was it was really fun to be honest we had great yeah. times yeah no. Are your sisters still doing any singing at all or anything? Or are the business around? No, they don't really. One's a nurse. Um, one works at an eye doctor. But they didn't really sing much. But it was just more about the family and really helping the community. And then I just loved it. I kept going with the church choir. And then there for a while, I didn't sing. So, you know, you just, there's some ebb and flows in your life. You go in different directions. So. That's true. That's true. So, okay. So there's the acting. But so when did the singing kind of, because how, how are you managing those two things? Well, the, they, they came together. So we um, filmed the movie, Not Alone. And, oh, yeah. Yep, yeah, Not Alone. And then we wrote a song for the end credits. My husband actually, I wrote the lyrics with him and he does more of the music side. And then we have an, a phenomenal producer, Chico Bennett. He's awesome. And Steve's awesome. So we put this song together. And uh, we put it at the end credits. And then I had Regina Daniels watch the movie. And she liked the movie a, a really lot. But you know what she loved? The music. And she's like, oh, Sarah, you have to make more songs. You have to record more songs. I'm taking you out. And she was just really a uh, really advocate. She was like, you really need to. And my husband had told me for years, you know, Sarah, you really should sing more. And I was like, well, I'm acting. You know, I'm trying to act you know how many roles you get to sing and act so anyway at the end of the day um i ended up recording two more songs i'm doing i'm getting ready to do a fourth one and during covid we uh actually filmed two music videos very good yeah. um can you see yourself do an album one day I'm oh for sure i'm already working on it baby yeah good <laughs> i'm good. with you good i will i will stream it i will buy it i will support it i will definitely do that <laughs> thank oh, you do. But I mean, I, I just, I did, because people understand this again, um, you know, we write our songs, you get the music, it's, I love the whole process, like a puzzle of the process. I love when the lyrics come together and then you like, and then the vocal comes together. I, I dream melodies sometimes, I'll be in bed and I'll dream a melody. I'm like, I don't know what that is, but I'll hum it into the phone. I'll have my little voice recorder app on my phone. I'm like, okay, it's two in the morning. Hmm. They go going to sleep. And then I later, love that. I do that sometimes. They come to me, it's divine intervention. The songs come to me. So for you, what is, how the songs come to you. It's funny you say that because I have done that many times in the middle of the night. Had my little voice memo and I sing yep. it and I'm like, and then the next morning I'm like, does that really make sense? And most of the time it does, right? I mean, and I kind of, it's interesting because I listened to something that you were talking, I don't even remember what it was, but you write kind of like a poem. I tend to do that too. Um, but then lyrically you have to go put it into the melody and all of that. But I'm lucky that I have two really great partners that I'm I'm really good at lyrics and then I'm really good to I'll sing it out. But, you know, I don't always do exactly the melody. But then when I get into it with them, us three can really we all have our talents. But I I use life experience a lot, like betrayal that I wrote. It was a it was a really hard time in my life. And when I wrote it and then I ended up recording it, it, it healed me. And I, I'm hoping it'll heal other people because I think that's the reason you make music is to affect people, right? Yes. Um, it's, I, it, it's about being vulnerable. That's the thing about music too. I had to remind myself to not censor myself, you know, not go, well, should I write about that? Or should I say this? And I was like, no, just write it out, record it, whatever. You can, you can, you can decide when we release it later to the public. You can do whatever you want later. But it was like the process, do not censor myself during the process. Let come let what's coming through, come through. I'm the conduit to whatever is, you know, whatever you believe in at home, folks. I'm the conduit, so, just, so get, it on, get it on paper or type yeah. it or whatever you do, whatever. Um, I just say paper because I'm, I'm old, um, you know, but typing it um, and then let it happen. And then you can decide later when we release it. But you're being vulnerable when you do songs, right? A hundred percent. You, you, I mean, you basically said what I feel. I, I 100% agree with you. You have to be vulnerable and you can't, you can't censor yourself. You can't be in this business and seeing and censor yourself. You have to let it all out and 
and that and that makes a good song. It does, and it really does. And I, I know I know so many talented friends of mine who are, and now you're one of them too. There are singers and songwriters, and these, and it's just I mean, they're putting out really just great music. I mean, just like, and I, I, I'm rooting for anybody because it's not. Again, I do it because it's fun. I mean, I've had some success, but I mean, I'm having fun with it. Uh, yeah. what I said earlier, and it is about that. Just I love. To, I have three songs working on right now. Two are collaborations. They're fun. They're just like they're just like you know why not? It's another it's another outlet to be creative. Um, and people want they, people want content right now. They want content. They want you. Yeah. They want music. They want TV shows. They want stuff. I agree, hundred percent. They need stuff. I mean, we're watching old stuff on movies. I look at sometimes the the streaming. I'm like, I can't find anything. Well, usually TV, I can find something new, but movies, very very rare. And songs, it's great when I hear a new song, and especially uplifting ones like yours. And you know, I like the uplifting ones. So yeah, it's great. Um, so you've done some modeling too, correct? In your past, yes. How how do you describe modeling? I mean, it's it's, it's one of those things that everybody thinks they know what it is, but I'm just kind of curious for you. How was it for you? I mean, for me, I I, I don't want to offend anybody, but it was boring. <laughs> I just you could cut. The, I mean, I I don't mean to be rude, but I just need to be more stimulated. And I did it when I I, I was really young, and I I you know to walk the runway and to to change in, in, in the swimsuits or this and that. I just, I felt like my mind wasn't stimulated enough. Not that I never made it to a, a top, top level. Cause I didn't. And when I was, I was just like, I'm over it. I need to like go back to finance school. You know, I just wanted to do more. I just need to be more active. So for me, I just found it. It just wasn't for me, but it, I made money doing it. And I was over in Australia playing basketball. I played yeah. uh, pro ball for after college one year. And so I did it to make a little extra money because they don't pay, they didn't pay us much. But so for me, it wasn't a good fit, but I have a niece that's a supermodel and she's been amazing. She's a, she loves it. She's traveled all over the world. I didn't have that experience. So um, it just, that one wasn't for me. <laughs> Wait, so, but let's go to the part you were in basketball, you were playing basketball in Australia? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay, how did that? I mean, I even your life is so interesting. It's like, okay, how did that happen? I mean, you're putting, that's like not, not common. Okay. <laughs> well, um, I played in college. Uh, I played since I was in third grade. I mean, all our family played, and luckily, I had amazing coaches that pushed us. And then I got a scholarship. I went to college, and then after college, I got an opportunity to play over in Perth, Australia, for the Perth Eagles, and they take two Americans. And so I went over there very young, very raw. And it, it, and most people don't even know this. They, you know, women play with a different size ball. Oh, I know Did that. you know that? No, no not 90% know that. of people don't know that. So in, a, in Australia, they play with the, the men's size ball. But in okay. the U.S., they have a women's ball and then a men's ball. So anyway, I had to switch back and that was an interesting thing. And then I'm in bloomers and I'm like, oh my God, this is really weird. <laughs> Where's the shorts? <laughs> so it's so just interesting. Wow. So. Okay, so living abroad, I've never, I've lived across the country, but I've never lived outside the country. Um, what is one thing that sticks out to you when you were living in Perth? Well, the beaches were phenomenal really? I mean, okay. incredible you you want to the weirdest thing was the difference in food like it was just if you wanted to talk about an awkward thing food was different but the beaches the people i mean australians are the nicest people they are i love australians <laughs> they i just like to listen to them and every day is a party they're like oh come over let's have a party i'm like I'm playing basketball. I can't, I cannot drink every night like you guys. Right. <laughs> right. They're, they're so, they're so great. And Australia, there's, there's a lot of strains here in Los Angeles. I mean, they're the, I mean, they're in, working in Hollywood. Um, For sure. Uh, and they're all just so laid back. They're mostly because they're, because they're, they're the kind of the bad cousins to the English or whatever. They're more fun. Like they're more fun and more laid back. <laughs> You know, they used to very proper yes. and British. They're like, eh, we're Australian. We're way down at the end of the world. Their Christmas is yeah. warm. You know, I kind of like, oh, yeah, you like know, kind of stuff. You know, it's like it's all upside down. So, no, down under. Yeah, we're down yeah. under. We got it. <laughs> they got it. They're always, they seem to just laid back and like, yeah, it's fine. Um, and so that, that's very cool. That's a great experience. Uh, what is one thing people should know about 
living abroad as an American. That I want to know about? That people should know about that you learned. That you uh, learned. Well, know about that. well driving on the wrong side of the road was awkward. Oh, that's scary, isn't that scary to me? I did, I was like, oh, yeah. Yeah. And the, I think that was the biggest thing. And then the bus system was really good there. And, but I drove, which on the wrong side, and then they have all these roundabouts, which yeah, at that time, you know, the, I hadn't seen many of those in Idaho. So. <laughs> Not in Coeur d'Alene or anywhere. You know, never seen them there. No, I'm, I'm just I there. mean, uh, most people think we're in horse and buggy there, but we're not. But <laughs> I'm just so I'm yeah. So Valley. driving on the wrong side. Valley, of you know, yeah. <laughs> I know. I know. I, I, I ironically, I have a brother who lives in Spokane with my stepmom, oh, and they, and so I've been up there many times. And I've been to Idaho many times, right across the way. So I do. I like Coeur d'Alene. Coeur d'Alene. Coeur d'Alene. I like it. Yeah. I like it. I do. Um, but yeah, so you saw like, roundabouts, wrong side of the road, which that, that scared the crap out of me the first time I went through that. Um, and if, actually, Rue guards. Which, which one? Rue guards, sorry. Did you see yeah. the Rue I mean, for me, everybody had these Rue guards, kangaroo guards. And I'm like, and then you're driving down this down a highway and you see all these kangaroos. So that's the other thing was very random. And everybody had these <laughs> I was like, what's a rue guard? He's like, yeah, you're going to get hit by a kangaroo. Yes. Yeah, so they're, that they're, was they're that was another unique. They're everywhere. <laughs> they're everywhere. They're, no, seriously, they're everywhere, folks. I mean, you know them. Everybody at home, they're everywhere. <laughs> That's, you, you, you'll see a kangaroo. You'll see a kangaroo. Don't worry. You'll see, you'll see a few. You have nothing to worry about. You will no. definitely see them. <laughs> That's that crazy. Um, would you ever want to do a musical? To combine the both? Of act, uh, yeah. I mean, seriously. Yes. <laughs> I mean, yes. Judy, oh. amazing. I mean, best. I mean, Renee Zellweger. I, she oh. that role of a lifetime. Of course, I would. I would do that in a heartbeat. I would love. Are there, it. Are there any musicals you that you are that are some of your faves that are out there? Say that again. I didn't hear you. Uh, are there any musicals that you love? Hmm. Oh, I love Judy. Yeah. Um, God, there's so many. Well, like for me, I'm a big fan of the opera fan. Um, I'm a big chorus line. I like I, I like stories that have an arc. I'm a big I'm a big arc person. Um, I I like um uh, I like well, I liked Hamilton, of course. Watched that ten thousand. Hamilton was unbelievable. Yeah, yeah of course. It amazing. It was amazing. Um, History. Yeah. Yes. Oh yeah. No, definitely. Um, I, I mean, I've seen things like from Pippin to Vita. I mean, I've seen I mean, I've seen a lot of different uh different ones but I, I love music one day i want to write a musical that's my that's my goal well i will be in your musical when you okay. write. <laughs> there we go there we go we have our dream both our dreams are fulfilled um no seriously that's that's one of my goals is to i've been slow I've, I've done a soundtrack and i've done i did two soundtracks i think i was i'm leading my way to getting to a musical well i and actually I, have a friend who's a, a, a tony award winning producer so i can connect you to <laughs> please, please do. No, thank you. I love that. I, I, just, I just, I just love it because it combines acting and singing, um, and songs for the story where they tell a story. Uh, it's a great way of communication. I think uh, a fun way of communication. It also, can evoke emotion, uh, deep yes. emotion. I just, I just, I love. I just, I think it's a. And when you said you're a singer and also you're an actress, I'm like, that's that's me in your future at some point. A musical has to be in your future. It has to be in your future. Okay. Hundred percent. I mean, everybody loves Phantom of the Opera, but and then I love I love Tootsie, even though it was just a it was yeah. it was both. It was great. I mean, I laughed. I, I it was a it was just cute. So I like cute, and I also go clear back to Phantom and Les Mis and all of them. You know, yes. you have to. Yes, definitely. I do. I love those. I do. I love oh, them. and what about Rock of Ages? Oh, I love that was so good. It was so much fun. It was so much fun. Oh my yeah, god. Yeah, when you're standing up in the end and everybody's dancing in the crowd. I know and I love rock, I love rock music. I mean, I totally I I mean I just it's yes, I, I'm a big, 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 big fan. Um but I but I, I can't wait to the stage comes back anyway. I'm a big, huge stage person. I love being on stage, I love being watching stage. I can't wait till that comes back. Yeah, I I, I loved it too. I can't I, I can't wait either. We always would go to New York and book show after show after show and yeah, I miss that. I do. And I just feel like there's a lot of people out there who are wet are ready to go see 
So live theater, I miss concerts. I miss, I, I miss a lot of, who are some of your favorite singers? Oh, my all time favorite uh, is Whitney Houston. Oh, okay. She's she my all time favorite, like who's passed away. Uh, I love Lady Gaga. I love Celine Dion. I love Adele. I mean, I love the Beatles. I mean, who doesn't love the Beatles? Not every song, not every right. song, but right. I like the Beatles. But as a as a single, like a singer, uh, I'm those are probably one of my top for sure. And if I want to go real old school, you know, Judy Garland is, you know, I loved her, and yeah, so yeah, Whitney. Uh, I mean, Whitney had really a really really great voice. I mean, I know all the other stuff that happened in the world, but it was like. Remember, she has a great, she had a great voice. And I remember Incredible. even listening to you, uh, I Will Always Love You. That song is pitch perfect. There's not a wrong, there's not a wrong note in it. I mean, it really, really, you listen to it, there's not a wrong note in it. It's no, there isn't. And I love to sing that, I Will Always Love You. And that last crescendo up, yes. I mean, I have to be warmed up to all get out. And I mean, and I'm still like praying right. I'm hitting it, you know? <laughs> She, she, she's amazing. And if I do it once or twice, kind of, is kind of close, I'm just like, thank you. But she's so good. And so I, that is one of my favorite songs. And I actually worked on my, with my coach on that song for months. And I was like, okay. And he's like, you have to switch to another song. I think you, you're, you're to your, you're to your peak there and we're good. Let's switch. So we switched to another song, but that's my all time favorite. So that you mentioned that's very sweet. She's, She's amazing. Oh, she's amazing. And I, I mean, just Celine Dion, I saw her in concert several times, you know, the costume in, in Vegas. And she, I always say she sounds effortless when she sings. It just sounds like it just, she just opens her mouth and the word, the vocals just come out. I mean, again, another pitch perfect singer. Her, her voice is just so, it's just so powerful and booming. And this little woman was like powerful, booming, it just sounds like she just opens her mouth and butterflies come out or whatever. I don't know. I don't know what I mean. It's, it's like <laughs> some things you can some things you can tell they're really trying to hit that note, and and, and it's, it's nothing wrong with that. But you just you just can tell that they're working really hard. So she, she just walks around with her mouth and just magic happens. I don't know. Yeah. Like, her body is an instrument. Seriously, I mean, like mm -hmm. it's just it's just it's. I'm a big Barbara Streisand fan, so same difference. I'm just like these these women can just be these powerful. Um, vocals, and so I tell people, remember Whitney Houston had good vocals. That was her thing. She had great voice in her her upbeat songs, her slow songs. Great Love of All, which was one of her early hits. Again, mm -hmm. another great song. I mean, uh, Jimmy almost have it all. So emotional. I mean, she has a, a million hits that were all this. They literally were a soundtrack to our lives. I mean, they were soundtracks to our lives, and they were all great vocally, great songs. We can't. Yeah, and gospel music too. And gospel music too. Preacher's yeah. Wife, that soundtrack, and. She can hold her own because her mom's Sissy Houston, you know, Dion Warwick's her cousin. I mean, like she's, I mean, again, surrounded by family royalty that can sing. I mean, it's just like they can sing. Yeah. Um, you know, I think it's kind of great. But like you said, and Lady Gaga, another person, talented pianist, talented songwriter, I mean, very artful. I mean, she has a whole, just the whole package. The whole package. She has the whole package. We went, we actually saw her in Vegas in, um, it was October before COVID. We were there when she fell off the stage. We were there at that. You were at that. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh my, God. my heart stopped. I was like, oh my gosh, is she going to be okay? She fell yeah. six feet. That's no, I, I know. I was like, whoa. Anyway, she got up and was a pro. I'm telling you. Yes. Amazing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love it. Um, so, what's, what's next for you these days? What's next? I mean, you're coming off some great successes, some great films. The company is doing great. What's, what's next? So next is we're going to release our two, the two videos that we shot in October and finished up. One's called Look to the Stars. Okay. I can't, have you seen it? Did you get a, nope. did you get a sneak peek? Oh, well, I'm going to need no, your I email. Sneak peek. <laughs> uh, yes, I'll give my email. I think I get a sneak peek. I want a sneak peek. Sneak yeah, peek. And then the next one's going to be Betrayal. And then I'm we're writing a new song called On the Wire that I'm just waiting to get back to LA to finish it up and record it. Chico's like, oh, when are you coming back? I'm like, when you're open. 
Yeah, I know, right? I know. We're starting to. I'm getting my first vaccination in a couple of days, so we're all we're all getting our vaccine. We're trying to get things back open again. They're opening things a little bit out here. No, I heard it's getting better, so that's great. And I don't want to bring that up anymore, but it's it's good. I mean, everybody needs to stay safe. But um, and then we're looking at a couple other movie projects, and we're getting ready to release. Not alone. We've been you know shopping that around, and it's getting a lot of a lot of press. Good. And um, yeah, I'm just looking at projects, different projects here and there and writing more music and I'm ready. I, I will tell you I, to talk about the music video and acting. I felt so free when I did that. And, and because you're, well, one thing you, I was kind of alone, but yep. you are, it's so freeing. There's no blocking, there's no lines, except you know the song. Right, but you right. can move free and you'll see what I mean when you watch the video. But I love that. It's oh, <laughs> just like, oh my God. <laughs> I know, it's so much fun. I, I love being I love being in this business. I can tell you too. I mean, it's just it's just I wouldn't be I wouldn't be doing anything else. I there's, there's, you know, there's nothing else I want to do. I want to be in this business until I can't do it anymore, you know, so to speak. I mean, that's this is my I chose this later in life and I'm glad I chose it. I'm I'm so with you and I love it. Maybe we'll do a song together someday. <laughs> I love that. Oh, no, we go. I love that. I love collaboration. I do. I love it. I do too. You have a song? I'll come in and do some some spoken word to it or whatever. I'll do something. What do you want to do? <laughs> I love it. Uh, I'm your new fan. I'm your new number one fan, Sarah. So I mean, just just be warned. I'm gonna follow you on social media and everything. So you can be just I'll be stalking you, I guess, in a good way. Okay, in a good way. Um, but thank you so much for your time. Thank you for coming on the show. You're welcome back anytime for any projects you want to talk about. Welcome Aww. anytime. You're so sweet. And thank you for your time. You're awesome. You're easy to talk to. And I already follow you on social media. So there you go. <laughs> thank you. I love it. Um, and so good luck. Yeah, again, good luck with the film at the Oscars and at the American Cinema uh, Editor Awards. Um, Either way, you're a winner already. I mean, you guys are a winner already. I mean, all the nominations, you're a winner already uh, with that. Um, because again, there's a lot of films out there who don't get nominations either. Um, so the fact you got nominations, got recognized for the good work, that's good. I'm that's pinching good. myself. <laughs> no, I don't blame. I don't blame you. Um, so where can they find uh, your your company? Where can they find you? I'm in Double Infinity Productions. My Instagram is Sarah Schroeder Matskin. My Facebook is Sarah Schroeder Matskin. And I'm on IMDb all over. So. <laughs> and next, and the YouTube, I have a YouTube channel that's under Sarah Schroeder Matskin too. You can find it under both, but Sarah Schroeder Matskin or Sarah Schroeder. Sarah Schroeder, someone, it's a long story, but just look under Sarah Schroeder. <laughs> my YouTube channel is under Sarah Schroeder. Someone, someone on Twitter, someone has my name or whatever. And I'm like, they have like one follower. It's like, so I had to add a one to my name. Like, well, everything else is James Lott Jr. everywhere. So folks at home, it's James Lott Jr. everywhere. Uh, but I, but one, on Twitter, it's James Lott Jr. one. And I, I reached out to them and they're not answering back. That's what happened to me on YouTube. And I, I, I <laughs> someone I actually stole, put my name in their video and a picture of us on the red carpet. But YouTube did take it down. So okay. we changed it to Sarah Schroeder. Yeah, they did. You have to complain. It took like 10 days, but they did do a good job. But that's why the name's a little different. But the YouTube channel has the EPK and the Not Alone official uh, trailer. But but the video's coming soon from Kelly. Kelly K. I love her. I love me some Kelly. Kelly K, and I, I, we go way back. She and I go way back. I love me some Kelly K. So I'm glad she introduced me to you. So this is great. Um, and I, so thanks to her. Uh, follow me with Jane, all James Lott Juniors are sold at James Lott Jr. and all social media platforms. And I'm on TikTok too, folks. I'm a TikTok star apparently. So go see what I'm talking about over there. <laughs> That's about the randomest things, but uh, it's all good fun. And it's all positive. So go ahead and check me out there, of course. And of course, this is JLJ Media, my online network that I started last year. Um, it's doing very well for us. I'm very excited. So thanks to everybody who watches the video or or downloads one of my podcasts. Um, we have over 35 shows ranging from Star Wars to soaps and everything in between. Um, and of course, my music, as you mentioned, my music's everywhere where music is. And I have a SoundCloud page, James Lodge, you can go there too. Uh, but please follow her, follow the company, follow me, follow our company. And we'll see you next time. Make sure you connect with people.